Uh, before we get started, uh, Christy Love has an announcement. Good morning. The Easter egg hunt sign-up sheet for volunteers is hanging up on the bulletin board out in the narthex. If anybody would like to volunteer, even if they're the age of 13 when they're no longer able to, all the way up, we have something for everybody, and it does take a lot of people to run it. Also, these will be these flyers will be out in the narthex on the table. If you're willing to take one or two, hang them up at a grocery store, at a con at convenience store, anywhere. Um, that will allow you to hang them up to promote it. Also, if your children or you know a child that would like to participate in it, you can call the office to pre-register your child or you can go online and pre-register on the church's website. And the last thing is Easter candy. We still need lots and lots of Easter candy individually wrapped. If you're willing to donate a bag of Easter candy, we need to have it by next Sunday so we can start filling the eggs. We have lots of eggs to fill. Or if you just want to give a monetary donation, put it in an offering envelope in your pews and write Easter egg hunt on it so we know where it goes. Thank you. There are a lot of announcements in the bulletin, but I'd just like to highlight a few. This week is candy making. It's a great big project and all help is welcome. It starts at 8 a.m. Um, through 9 p.m. Monday through Friday this week. Also, I'd like to remind that next Sunday, March 13th, there is a leadership meeting that will be held at 2 o'clock p.m. Um, announcement about a flea market. July 23rd of this year, there will be a flea market on a smaller scale than other years, and it will be held out in the church parking lot. The details are being developed, and more information will follow soon. And vendors will be invited to participate this year. Uh, penny collection. Today there will be accepting pennies. There's a container uh, on the table right outside the sanctuary door and the money goes to local families and to the United Methodist Home for Children in Mechanicsburg. Rediscovering Our Youth uh, invites all to come out to join them on March 18th, which is a Friday night at 7 p.m. for game night in the all-purpose room. They're going to be playing pie in the face and pointing fingers. Sounds interesting. Come join in the laughter and the fun times. Um, one last announcement. Uh, last week, uh, it says you missed a great session of the new Bible study class, The Nine Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, they barely scratched the surface on the subject and they will be having another uh, class here at the church on Tuesday, March 8th from 7 p.m. to 8.30. So come out and discover what the Holy Spirit can do for you and the Winterstown United Methodist Church. If you need additional information, you can contact Dan Kipp and his telephone number and email address is in the bulletin. And one last reminder, next week, um, spring forward. So don't forget to turn your clocks forward one hour so you make sure you make the church at the right time. Okay, and next we'll have the birthdays and anniversaries. The birthdays, uh, Monday is Esther Krieger and Chris Kobe. On Wednesday, Gabriella Gladfelter. On Thursday, Nancy Young. And on Saturday, Alexandra Gladfelter and Diane Leon. And the anniversaries, on Wednesday, we have Linda and Larry Anderson. And on Friday, Matt and Danielle Latimer. Okay, and with that, now let's everyone stand and greet and meet those around you.
Could everyone please stand and we'll do the call to worship? And this week the congregation starts first, so I'm going to read along with you to get us all started. God is our shelter and refuge on the days of trouble, and our hope and joy on the days of celebration. Day after day, we seek God's face and the assurance of God's holy love. One thing we ask of God. Beloved of God, enter this worship in thanksgiving, for God is among and within us. Now please remain standing as we sing our first hymn, Lord, Who Throughout These Forty Days, hymn number 269. As you can see, things have changed a little bit from the bulletin. <laughs> Unfortunately, Pastor Mitch uh, uh, called this week. He was hoping to be here and, and to be uh, in the pulpit, uh, but his blood work showed that his uh, white blood cell count was uh, way below one and was supposed to be above four. Uh, and his doctors uh, told him that he's not to be out anywhere until that number goes back up. So we're gonna be sharing together, and he's one of the individuals as we look for our prayer time that we wanna lift up uh, so that very soon he can be with us. So we're not sure exactly uh, what the schedule is gonna be now uh, with this particular setback. Uh, so we'll have to see, he, he meets with his doctor this coming week and from that, he'll know uh, when he's going to have additional treatments, if and when uh, that'll happen. So we'll know, know this coming week 
uh, but his situation is going to be. So we need to continue to, to pray for he and Carol and the, and the family. So uh, what we want to do is just uh, open up to anyone that has uh, joys and concerns. Uh, we have a microphone back here. Or anybody? Is there anyone? Okay. Right up here in front. Good morning. I just wanted to say it was actually a joy. Ryan, Samantha, and Megan, and Nicholas Vandervelt did the polar bear plunge, and they raised $347. Oh, so this is their oh. third year of doing it, and they're going to do it again next year, as they're, but they want to do costumes. The costumes were really bizarre yesterday, uh. but they did a wonderful job, and I'm very proud of my three children for helping others that can't do it and that give them their special day. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that. But you're making me cold. <laughs> I have a couple of joys. First of all, it's great to see Diana Henry back with us. She has been out for a long time. And Diana, raise your hand so everybody can see uh, how many weeks it, it's been a month. 11th of January, wow. she went to the hospital. And I also want to give a, a joy, this is a joy, and it's a really uh, a big thank you that we have a young man in our church who is such a, an actor, and that is Clem Waldrop. I don't think he's, is he here today? No, he's ready, getting ready for the performance this afternoon. But he appeared in uh, The Beauty and the Beast and uh, did a fantastic job. And uh, as a congregation, we should be very, very proud of Quinn. Thank you. My joy, I'm going to be a great grandmother again in August. Oh, praise the Lord. That is a joy. Anybody else, a joy or concern? I have a joy and a concern. My joy is that, uh, well, it's a joy and a concern at the same time because Originally, my grandmother Bonnie and Nelson were going to stay in Florida a little longer to keep Mitch and Carol for a little while. But since he's still not well, they're not going to make it down till September. So, my grandma and Nelson are actually going to come home the 28th of this month, and they'll expect to be home by the 29th. So I'm looking forward to seeing them again. And my concern is uh, for the family of Terry Wallace. Uh, he's a lay speaker. Some of you may know him. He goes to Mount Pisgah, United Methodist. It's where Pastor Keith went. He just passed away this past weekend. Uh, he's a family member, so I ask for your prayers for my family and this time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, another one. We need, really need to keep Pastor Mitch in prayer, all of us, and we are truly blessed, blessed to have Terry here with us. Anybody else? Did you have your concern? It's always a joy to <clears throat> see some of our college students with us and uh, last service we, we had uh, three or four and we have another one uh, with us uh, Elizabeth this morning so that's great to see that's great to see all the kids here this morning uh, we praise the Lord for that anything else anybody has that they want to share before we pray okay let us join together our hearts in prayer 
Father God, we thank you for this opportunity that we can come into your house this morning. We thank you for the many ways that you've blessed our lives, made it possible for all of this to happen. We thank you that you are good, that you guide us and direct us in many different ways. You help us with decisions. You help us with relationships. And for this, we give you thanks. We pray for those that were lifted up for uh, medical problems, uh, loss problems, especially Pastor Mitch and Carol as Pastor Mitch goes through all that he's going through. Lord, we ask that your healing hand would be upon him and, and to bring that blood cell count back up to where it should be, that he can move forward and be stronger. We pray for Carol and the, and the family as they uh, minister with him through this. We ask that you would give wisdom and understanding to all of the doctors and caregivers that they would know the, the right course of action and the right things to do. We pray that in respect to all of those that were mentioned this morning, that you would help uh, the caregivers, the physicians, uh, whoever they have to interact with, Lord, that uh, not only is, is your healing hand upon them, but you're using those that you've given talents to to minister as well. We thank you for the many joys that were expressed this morning. Help us to take time on a regular basis, Lord, to thank you and praise you for the joys in our lives. We too often focus on uh, problems and turmoil and forget that you have blessed us in so many ways that we overlook it. Help us to rejoice and give us hearts of thanksgiving. Lord, we pray for everybody that is listed in the bulletin on the uh, prayer list. We ask that you would touch each situation, whatever it needs to be, whether it's spirit, soul, body, finances, whatever it is, Lord, that your hand would be upon each one of those individuals. Lift them up, give them wisdom, understanding, give them a peace, and help things come together for your good and for your glory in each situation. Lord, we pray that uh, you would continue to, to touch us and strengthen us as a, as a congregation so that we can uh, then reach out and touch. And we do pray for the Easter egg hunt coming up where we have well over 100 children from our community come and, and that they will receive not only candy, but they will receive uh, the message of Jesus Christ as well. Uh, help that to touch many lives. Lord, we ask that you would reach around the world, uh, ministering to, to all of our, our ministers and missionaries that are sharing the gospel, that you would protect your children, especially in, in war-torn war -torn areas and those that are uh, being hurt, and persecuted, and even killed for their faith. Lord, wrap your arms of love and protection around them. Guide the leaders of our nation, Lord, that good decisions would be made. And guide each one of our lives every day, Lord. And we ask it all in the precious name of Jesus, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, if you would stand as you're able and, and we'll join in our next hymn. There's a wilderness, a wideness, I'm sorry, a wideness <laughs> in God's mercy.
this time the uh, choir is going to share their message of music with us. Thank you, choir. It's wonderful to know that we have the most expert of expert potters to guide and mold our lives. At this time, we're going to share with uh, back to the Lord of our, our blessings, our tithes and our offerings. So will the ushers please come forward?
Father God, we just thank you and praise you for the abundance that you blessed us with. Thank you for the privilege of worshiping you by returning a portion of that into your hands where you can multiply it and bless it and bless us as your, as your givers being responsible to you in the way that you want us to be. We ask that you would help use it to open more eyes and more hearts to you and to give you glory. For we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Just a note before we get there, there won't be any communion this morning. As you can see, there's nothing here. Without Pastor Mitch uh, here, we won't be doing uh, communion. So that means I can speak twice as long, right? Another hour or two, we'll be out of here. Unless I mess up my tablet again. <clears throat> now, Pastor Mitch, he's been kind of following the theme of Lent uh, in, in his messages uh, and the Gospels. Well, <clears throat> I was thinking that I may be speaking again in April, so I began to, to look for some scriptures uh, that, that may, maybe would at least bless me, if, if not anybody else, uh, after we got by Easter. Uh, but uh, because of Pastor Mitch's situation, the Lord has blessed me with an opportunity uh, to share it earlier, so it's not a uh, message leading up to Easter, but uh, hopefully it's something that we can all uh, take heart from. Um, now the scripture, uh, I'm not going to read the scripture, uh, but I'm going to work through it, kind of a few verses at a, at a time. So if you want to follow along in your, your Bible, uh, you, you can kind of see what we're going to be talking about uh, as you do that. Uh, and the title of the message is God's Wisdom, Our Protection. So we're going to look at, at, at his wisdom and, and how it protects us as his children, uh, his beloved children. Now, I have to, to determine, okay, where do I get my wisdom from? Uh, in this world as, as I grow and as I work and as I make decisions. Where, where do I get my wisdom from? What is my source of wisdom? And is my source accurate and true? So that's kind of one of the first questions I have to ask myself is where do I get it and is it accurate uh, and true? And, and when we, we look at God's wisdom, nobody in this world drifts towards God's wisdom just naturally as we live in, in society and in the world. But if we're drifting, we're drifting further away from God's wisdom and we're taking in the wisdom of the world, which, uh, you know, there's all kinds of different stuff out there, cannot be a blessing to our lives, but a problem in our lives and not take us where uh, we want to go. It's kind of like if, you, if you're rowing a boat in a stream, <clears throat> God in his wisdom and his truth is upstream. The opposite is downstream. So it's easy to get tired and just drift downstream and let the world mold me into what it wants to. Or I can row <laughs> with some effort upstream and find the truth and the wisdom of God that can really help me out. And we kind of have a control over that because when we take in wisdom, when we think of that, we have an eye gate, we have an ear gate, and we have inner emotional interactions with those around us. And those are how we, we take in uh, wisdom, understanding, uh, how we learn about the world we live in, how we learn about our God. Uh, and it's that place, if we're disciplined and we guard those, it determines what we take in. And it's like back way uh, eons ago for you younger people, when I was in college <laughs> and the computers were first coming out and you had to type punch cards 
and then feed the punch cards into the computer to get a solution to your problem. Uh, and uh, they, the saying was, hey, garbage in, garbage out. If you don't put the right thing in, the right thing's not going to come out. And I always kept getting the message, uh, cannot compute. I had a comma wrong somewhere, something. And, and that's kind of the way it is with, with wisdom. You know, if we put good wisdom and understanding within us, we, we can be able to be successful in the world, have more peace, have more happiness, better relationships uh, in, in everything that we do. So it, it kind of comes down to whoever controls our, our minds and our thought process uh, is gonna determine the outcome of our lives. And really our thoughts are the only things that we have a majority of the influence or control over is the thoughts that we think. Uh, sometimes a thought can pop in there that we don't like and, and we have to put it away. And, and that's kind of what God's wisdom is saying. You know, get, get, get rid of the, the thoughts because our thoughts then become actions and our actions become a habit and our habit becomes a lifestyle. And that lifestyle determines the destiny. Is it was our life good and according to the will of God, or, or did we kind of float along and drift along? So we, we need to look at this and look at the wisdom God has, and hopefully we can take some of that and it can impact us for, for good uh, in the world. So we're gonna look at the second chapter of Proverbs, and we're gonna look at uh, the first 12 verses of uh, Proverbs chapter two. And what we'll do is we'll look at two or three verses at a time, uh, see what it has to say for us, and how maybe we can apply that to our lives uh, so that our lives become more enhanced and, and precious uh, in his sight. But uh, what I'll do is, uh, first of all, combine the first three verses, and, and I'll, I'll read those three verses. You can follow along in, in your Bible. It says, my son, if you accept my words, and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding. And then it goes on. That's not the end of the sentence, but we'll, we'll take that part <laughs> to begin with. But when you see that, the very first thing he says there is, my son, my daughter. This is God the Father uh, using terms of endearment, of love, uh, of compassion for uh, those that he's speaking to. You and I, his, his children, he loves us tremendously. And he's saying, okay, my children, listen up. I wanna give you something that's very important. It's gonna be a wonderful blessing to you and to your lives. Uh, it, it's gonna make a change. Now, one of the things that he, he tells us here as he's speaking to us uh, out of great love is the fact that Hey, you, the initiative is you. <laughs> you gotta take some action uh, in this and you gotta do some things. And the words that popped out to me was what I have to do. Uh, the ball's kind of in my park. It says, accept my words. Store up my commands. Turn your ear to wisdom. Apply your heart. Call out cry aloud. Those are all actions that I must take. So God is saying, I'm going to give you good. I'm going to give you my wisdom understanding, but you have to take the initiative or it won't get in. And it won't be any use for you. It won't be any good for you. You, you need to, to dig into this um, and apply it. And one of the great things uh, I kind of think I, I saw in my life as, as I began to dig into it and, oh yeah, that this is good, yeah, this has helped me in this situation. Uh, there's value in that. I'm gonna dig a little deeper, a little harder. Uh, so through my life, you know, I've been able to grow a little bit, dig a little, learn how to dig a little bit and, and apply it, uh, accept it. Uh, when, when he talks about uh, calling out and crying out, th this is what we do in prayer, is we cry out to the Lord, cry out to him. Uh, and uh, when we think of James, that, that's kind of the, the prayer that we need to have. It says uh, in James 1, 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously. So one of the things he's telling us to do, call out. Hey, you call out to me and I'll, I'll respond. I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. 
I won't hold it back from you. I'll share it with you gladly. So as we see that uh, value, uh, we, we go after it. Uh, and, and going after and digging for, for God's wisdom and understanding should be uh, a hallmark of our lives. Now, <clears throat> how many hunters do we have in here? Oh, we got, a, we got a few hunters here and there. So if, if you've been out in the woods or the brush uh, in the wintertime, uh, you see lots of rabbit tracks, don't you? And they're going every which way. And if you're uh, trying to hunt rabbits like, uh, you know, I know Jerry does with these dogs there. He lets the dogs run the rabbit trails. But if any time I ever tried to find a rabbit trail, it never led to a rabbit. <laughs> and there were so many crisscrossing trails that it was confusing. Didn't know which way to go. And that's kind of how it is with, with life. Uh, if, if we don't take the initiative to, to seek God's wisdom and, and live according to that, it's like following rabbit trails that don't live, work, don't lead <laughs> to the rabbit and, and come to the end of our life and, and it's kind of a wasted life if we're just following all of these rabbit trails. But as we seek his wisdom and understanding, he puts us on the right path, the firm path, the straight path, the path that doesn't go in the swamp. Uh, where we can uh, get, get hurt and full of turmoil. Uh, he tells us in Colossians, uh, our Father does, this is him speaking to us, uh, and he says, my goal. So this is the goal of God. For me, for you, for all of us, it's God's goal is this, that I and you may have full riches of complete understanding in order that we may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. For in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So if our, we place ourselves in Christ, uh, you know, God's will is for me to know all those treasures, those wisdom, that understanding, and really, when you, when you look at unbelievers, they can't understand the word of God. And, and I know that uh, w way back, it didn't mean a whole lot to me at, at times. But <clears throat> the, the, I had a release time education teacher that, that when I was, the last class I ever had with that uh, in sixth grade, uh, she said, hey, is there anybody here that would like to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? And I know five of us raised our hand. I had no emotion, but you know, it was something I wanted to do. And <clears throat> as I accepted Christ at that point, I could see changes in my life. I, didn't, I wouldn't tell anybody, though. I was afraid to tell anybody. <laughs> I, didn't tell, I was one of those closet Christians for, for years. <laughs> but I could see there was a change in my life. I began to actually read the Bible a little bit on my own, and, and it was making some sense. Uh, you know, once you know, I was in Christ, and, and Christ says, as, as you give your life to me, I'll send the Holy Spirit into your life so that he can interpret the things of life. So I, I, am, I was blessed, and I'm truly glad that as a young person, I came to know the Lord. Uh, and, it, and it kept me out of a lot of things in life that some of the you know, I played a lot of sports, other the people on the, on the teams and that, uh, where, where lives didn't take good turns. But the Lord, because he got a hold of me at a young time, through his wisdom and understanding, his, his slowly guidance, began to, to uh, be more and more uh, for me in, in my life. And then looking at the verses 4 and 5, it says, And if you look for it as silver and search for it as hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. And the, the terms he's look, using here as far as looking for silver and searching for hidden treasure, these are mining terms. Any miner knows that you've got to move a whole bunch of rock and dirt before you ever get to the silver. So it takes a lot of effort to get to the prize. Same way with you know, gold and diamonds and gems. It takes a lot of digging, a lot of moving earth to, to ever get to the prize, get, get to the gift that you want. 
So he's saying here again to me, hey, it's going to take some effort, but if you put forth some effort, man, you're, you're going to then have the understanding uh, of God and you're going to have the knowledge of God. Just, just seek it and, and search for it uh, all your days. So it's an intensive search that really leads to, to great abundance uh, and knowing the right path, because God is the only one that knows the right path uh, throughout our lifetime. And when we look at uh, Psalm 119, verses 9 through 11, uh, there's a question that the psalmist poses here, and he says, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? How can I know the right way to go? And then the answer comes back, by living according to the word of God. And it says, I seek you with my whole heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And we're, we're all like that. Young people, old people, you know, what, what's the way that keeps us out of trouble, out of harm, out of sin? Well, it's living according to the word of God. And the wisdom and understanding that we get from that can keep us away from all of that harm. And then as, as we go into uh, verse 6, it's, it says, For the Lord gives wisdom, from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Okay, so the Lord is going to give us this wisdom and understanding from his mouth. How many of you heard God speak, speaking to you in a vo verbal voice? Anybody ever hear that? I didn't either. So the verbal voice that, that we have from God is the Bible, the Word of God. That's Him speaking to us through the Word, through the pages. As, as, as we look at, at the Word of God and we're searching the, for wisdom in the Word of God, it begins to jump off the page and we begin to understand uh, more and more of the ways uh, of God. Uh, and uh, when we look at the Word of God, there's hundreds of nuggets of wisdom in the, in the word of God that uh, uh, can help us to have a happier and more successful life. Now, <clears throat> when I look at myself and okay, there's a hundred, say if there's a hundred nuggets of, of wisdom that can really help me out, and if I only know 10 of them, that means those other 90 areas in my life, the world is dictating their wisdom to me. So the more of these nuggets of wisdom that I can place within my heart and my spirit through letting God speak to me through his word, uh, the more I won't get into the ways of the world and, and the ways that you know, lead to, to problems in my life. So it's wonderful that, hey, there is the ultimate source of wisdom and understanding, and it's by revelation. Remember, when Christ comes into our life, he says, I'll send you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will dwell within you and make known the ways and the things and the wisdom of God. So it's by revelation of the Holy Spirit working within us as we read the word of God that allows that to jump off the page and enter our heart. Uh, so we don't want to be deceived by the wisdom of the world. Uh, another uh, going to the next couple of verses, he is, is going to uh, tell us about some promises uh, in these two verses. He says he holds in store for, he holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless and he guards the course of the just and protects the ways of his faithful ones. So there's promises here. And, and again, if you, if, you, if you look at certain words there, uh, he's saying he's going to give you success. He's going to be your shield. He's going to be your guard. And he's going to protect you. Now, when you think of the uh, president and how much protection <laughs> and guarding is around someone of that stature, you know, there's hundreds of people working to protect that one individual. God loves you more than any of those protectors of, of the president, more than, than we can understand. His love is great for us. And he says it especially comes to those who are upright, to those that are blameless, and to his faithful ones. 
So as true believers, that, that he gives all of these wonderful promises. And anyone that's not a believer that wants to join in, that uh, he wants all. His desire, and Peter says, he wishes all would come to faith in Jesus Christ and that none would turn away. So he's offering this to everyone, but the believers are the ones that can understand, can drink that in. Uh, and as we drink that in, it's gonna have an impact on how we act. Uh, and that's one of the ways that we can see what's going on. Nine and 10, it says, you will understand what is right and just and fair, every good path. For wisdom will enter your heart, and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. So it's our heart, our spirit, uh, and our mind where we drink in the, the wisdom of God. And when it dwells there, uh, like we saw in the other verse, it affects everything that we do. And the things that we do become more profitable to ourselves, to our family, to, to those around us. Uh, so the course of action that only God knows, and he can help us on that path, by his wisdom, by his knowledge, uh, and, and make a big difference. Uh, he says in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, he says, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Those who are perishing are the ones that have turned their back on God, want nothing to do with God. So he's turning this into foolishness. They just can't understand it. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Uh, how many of you guys like power under the hood? Any of the guys like power under the hood? <laughs> well, the wonderful thing is the power under our hood, the hood of our spirit, as the most powerful person, you know, that we can't even comprehend uh, for all power and authority are his. So we have that power under our hood as we drink in the wisdom and understanding uh, that, that we have there. And he says, I'm going to destroy them, the wisdom of the wise and the, intelligent, the intelligence of the intelligent. And what he's mean by that is those that have gained wisdom from the world, uh, knowledge from the world, none of God's knowledge, but, but just whatever the world can teach them, whatever the world can, can share with them, they've gone that way and they think, you know, that the wisdom that they've gone, the, 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 the mental capacity and mental understanding that they've gone, is, is what is right and good, uh, and all that intelligence. Uh, you know, we, we have a, a lot of people, you know, they go to college and get advanced degrees, and, uh, and he's saying, some of those that have turned their back on me, that think they're wise, I'm gonna turn that to foolishness. At, at some point in time, it's gonna be dictated that some of the things that they're, you know, teaching, exposing of that, are falsehoods, uh, and, and I'm gonna expose that. And one of the things that's currently being exposed is evolution. You know, evolution is a, you either buy, believe the Bible or you believe the world uh, and think of evolution. Well, <clears throat> evolution was developed by someone that got angry with God, turned away from God, and says, I'm gonna figure things out and keep God out of the picture. And uh, unfortunately, you know, that's how it got started. Uh, and people are holding on to today, even when there's, uh, the, the, the myth has huge Swiss holes all over in it, especially as scientists have gained in genetics and, and DNA, you know, they can see that there's no way that a lower life form can develop a higher lower life form. It all goes the other way. It can only degrade, it can't increase. There, there's no way, you know, the DNA chains, you know, can't all of a sudden put more rungs on themselves. They disappear. And when they disappear, you know, you, you get a lower form of dog and you get a lower form of dog and now you got dogs that can't live outside the house. And so so it, that, the whole thing goes, goes backwards. But that's one of the things that's taught in, in our universities and our schools today that it's not true. It, it, it's a myth. And, and God says, I'm beginning to show that as more science evidence is coming out, but people are still holding on to that. Okay, 11 or 12, just wrapping it up here, he says, discretion will protect you. And when he's talking about here protection, 
It's going to protect you from the world, uh, from the ways of the world. And understanding will guard you. And what he's meaning is there, he's, he's going to guard you from allowing the wisdom of the world to come in and overtake your thinking and get you off on, on the rabbit trails. And he says, wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men and from men whose words are perverse. And we live in a fallen culture. There, there's more non-Christians than there are Christians. Uh, and they're moving further and further away from God. And that's why we see more harm and more hurt, not only in our country, but around the world. And that's why we start seeing Christians being persecuted even in our own country. Uh, and God said that this is going to, to happen as people drift away from him, uh, drifting uh, towards evil, it's going to get this way. And he said, when it gets close to my return, it's going to be like the days of Noah. Well, what were the days of Noah like? There were only eight righteous left in the days of Noah. All of the civilization, civilization at that point in time had turned their backs on God except Noah and his family. There were only eight righteous left of all of God's creation at the time of Noah. It took him 120 years to build the ark. And he told the people, he, he cried out to the people, hey, judgment is coming, judgment is coming. God is going to send a flood. And they laughed at him, turned their backs on him, turned their back on God, so that there were only eight that were saved. And what we see in our, our world today is more and more are, are, are turning away from God. And, and it's breaking God's heart because he loves each and every one of us. He, he created each of us in uniqueness with special gifts and abilities that, that can make this world a, a great and a better place. But culture is, is falling away. And that's why we need to be the, the, the light and the salt here in Winterstown. Uh, you know, society, we can, we can look at all kinds of things in a society that shows us it's going further away, whether it's marriage, sanctity of life, how we treat others around the world, how we treat God's people, um, all of these things. So as we look at God's scripture, he says, put my wisdom into your heart and live by it, and I will guard you, I will protect you, I will save you from evil. And although we may go some, through some things in our lives, and he's got us in our hands. And we know the, the future. The future is a life forever in his presence in heaven. And that's going to be a great and wonderful thing. So we give God all the glory. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you and praise you that you are such a good and wonderful God. Thank you that you've touched each one of our lives. Touch us anew. Give us a, a, a new uh, desire and your discipline to, to search your word, to, to drink in more of your wisdom and understanding within our lives. Help us to, to start. We ask a special blessing on our young people here that your word could be, would, would get into their heart, their mind, their spirit uh, be before the, the world leads them on rabbit trails that lead to nowhere. Continue to guide our lives, teach us in all that we do, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, now we'll, we'll share in our closing hymn, uh, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, 384. Stand as you're able.
be filled with wisdom and understanding of the Lord, be filled with his spirit that can interpret it to you. Let the love of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost permeate all that you do. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen.